In this video, we will discuss the histopathology of squamous intraepithelial lien or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So, this squamous intraepithelial lien or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is the name of one and the same thing that is cervical precancerous lens. And we have discussed the pathogenesis of these cervical precancerous lens in the previous video. Now we will focus on the histopathology. So these cervical precancerous lens that can either be called as SIL, squamous intraepithelial lien or CIN, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia can be categorized in two ways. The first way to categorize this is by this SIN, there is SIN1, SIN2 or SIN3 cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, 2 and 3 or alternatively you can classify SIN1 as LSIL low grade squamous intraepithelial lien or this SIN2 or SIN3 can be collectively categorized as high grade squamous intraepithelial lien. So remember these two ways of classification SIN1, SIN2, SIN3 and low grade squamous intraepithelial lien or high grade squamous intraepithelial liens. Now let's discuss the morphological or histopathological features of this. Now, the most important point to remember is that the morphological hallmark of cervical precancerous lesions is dysplasia. So, the difference between normal squamous cells of transformation zone and these cervical precancerous lesions lies in only one word. The difference lies only in one word that is dysplasia. And what do we mean by dysplasia? Dysplasia means lack of uniformity or in other words, variation in the size of cell, in the size of nucleus or in the presence of mitotic figures. So remember, the dysplasia is the morphological hallmark of cervical precancerous lesions. And how do we classify this into SIN1, SIN2 and SIN3? So in SIN1 or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, the dysplastic changes are confined in the lower one third of squamous epithelium. You know that squamous epithelium is made up of multiple layers. And if this dysplastic changes, that is the variation in size of the cell, variation is the size of the nucleus or presence of mitosis. If these dysplastic changes are present only in lower one third layers of this squamous epithelium, it is called as SIN1. And if it is present in lower one third as well as middle one third of the squamous epithelium, then it is called as SIN2. And if these dysplastic changes are present throughout the full thickness of squamous epithelium, they are categorized as SIN3. So in SIN1 dysplasia is in lower one third, in SIN2 it is in lower one third and middle one third and in SIN3 the dysplasia is present all around. And also remember that SIN2 or SIN3 can be collectively called as high grade squamous intraepithelial lien while this SIN1 is low grade squamous intraepithelial lien. And here you can see high grade squamous intraepithelial lien, this is actually SIN3. You can see that these cells are abnormally large in size with abnormally large nucleus. These are the dysplastic cells. And you can see these dysplastic cells are present not only in the lower one third, rather they are also present here in the upper layers as well. So this is SIN3 in which dysplastic changes can be present in the full thickness. Now there is another important point that in SIN1 and SIN2 when the lower layers show dysplastic changes, what happens to the superficial layers? The superficial layers show coilocytic change. Now what do we mean by coilocytic change? Coilocytic change is a cytological abnormality that develops in those cells that are infected with human papilloma virus. And how does this coilocytic change appear? This coilocytic change appears as a perinuclear halo. You can see that surrounding this nucleus there is a clear zone of cytoplasm that is a zone of vacuolization or we can call it as a halo, H-A-L-O. So this perinuclear so this perinuclear halo or perinuclear vacuolization is a characteristic feature of coilocytic change. And other than this perinuclear clearing or perinuclear vacuolization, another feature of coilocytic change is increase in size of cell. So this is the coilocytic change. And this coilocytic change is different from this dysplasia. In these dysplastic cells, usually this perinuclear vacuolization is not visible, while in this coilocytic change, this perinuclear halo or perinuclear vacuolization is visible. And remember that this coilocytic change is present in the superficial layers in cases of SIN1 and SIN2. While in SIN3, this coilocytic change is not visible. Why it is not visible? Because in SIN3, all the layers of squamous epithelium have been transformed into dysplastic cells and it is rare to visualize this coilocytic change. While as in SIN1 and SIN2, only the lower layers are affected with dysplasia. So the superficial layers are intact and they can manifest this coilocytic change. So this is the histopathological feature of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or squamous intraepithelial lien. 
Now, other than the histopathology of the tissue, we also sometimes do the cytological examination by pap smear. Pap smear is a regular way of screening of cervical cancer or cervical precancerous lesions in women of reproductive age. So, what we do in pap smear, you can see that this is endocervix and this is ectocervix. This area is ectocervix and this area is endocervix. And we studied that in this area, the cells lining are called transformation zone, transformative zone. So, what we do in pap smear, we take a sample of cells from this transformative zone. We only take a sample of cells, we do not completely remove the tissue. We just take a sample of cells and we visualize it under the microscope. So, this is an easy way of visualizing whether there is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or not. And how the cells manifest these changes of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia? As you progress along SYN1, SYN2, SYN3, you will see an increase in nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. You can see in SYN1, the nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio is not very large, while in SYN3, there is a large nucleus and relatively smaller cytoplasm. So, if there is increase in nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio, there is progression from SYN1 to SYN2 to SYN3. The second feature is pleomorphic nuclei. Pleomorphic nuclei means nuclei that vary greatly in their size and shape. You can see in SYN1, almost all the nuclei are similar, but in SYN3, some of the nuclei are very large in size, some are moderate and some are small. This is the variation in the size and shape of nucleus. And the third characteristic is atypical cellular appearance. You can see that in SYN1, the cells still somewhat resemble the squamous cells. But in SYN3, the cells have become ovoid that are totally different from the morphological appearance of squamous epithelial cells. So, in cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, what do you see? You see increase in nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio, you see pleomorphic nuclei and you see atypical cellular appearance and these features are present more as you progress from SYN1 to SYN2 and SYN2 to SYN3. So, this is a way of visualizing these cervical neoplastic cells by the way of pap smear. Now, if we are performing regular pap smear and the pap smear show abnormal cells either this SYN1, SYN2 or SYN3, now what to do? So, if we do pap smear and this pap smear shows abnormal cells, then we do colposcopy. What is colposcopy? Colposcopy is the examination of cervix by an instrument called colposcope. And through colposcope, we do colposcopy and visualize the area of transformation zone. Then we use acetic acid to highlight abnormal areas. So, the concept is that acetic acid will highlight those areas of transformation zone that are precancerous. So, we if we have detected abnormal cells on pap smear, we have done colposcopy and this colposcopy and on colposcopy we have used acetic acid which helps us in visualization of abnormal areas. Then what we will do? We will take a biopsy of these abnormal highlighted areas. Then after taking the biopsy, we see it under the microscope and under the microscope, we will use this morphological criteria to categorize it as SYN1, SYN2 or SYN3 or low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. So, if the biopsy proves that this is low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, then it does not need any excision. We will only do careful observation and will repeat the test after a few years. But if the biopsy shows high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or if the biopsy shows that low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion that was present in the previous episode has still persisted, what we do in these cases? We do excision of these abnormal areas. So, this is the management algorithm of cervical precancerous lesions. Let me summarize again. Firstly, we only do pap smear which is a very easy test. If the pap smear shows abnormal cells, then we do colposcopy. We highlight the abnormal precancerous areas with acetic acid and after highlighting those areas, we take a biopsy of these areas. After taking the biopsy of these areas, we do microscopic examination and if this microscopic examination proves it to be low grade lien, then we only do careful observation and if the histological examination shows it as high grade squamous intraepithelial lien or persistent low grade squamous intraepithelial lien, then we have to excise. So, this is the management of squamous intraepithelial lien and cervical intraepithelial neoplasia.